One of the common questions we get asked when building out model-driven applications inside of Power Apps is how can I make them look a little bit prettier? For example, the app above me right now could use a little bit of touch to it, a little friendly touch to make it look a lot prettier. Well, in this video, we'll show you a few steps. We're talking less than 15 minutes of work to add a lot more niceties to your list that you're seeing above me right now. So stay tuned. If you're interested in more content around the Power Platform, please visit our website to get a 40% discount off our annual subscription today. Use my promo code prag.works forward slash Brian40. My name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're gonna walk through how to add a lot more style to your model different application. So let's walk through a starting point here now. So when I'm looking at the application you saw a moment ago, you're seeing it, it missing a little bit of element. There's no color to it. There's no like banded rows. How can we make this look a lot prettier? Well, first of all, we have things like statuses here. We can make this a lot more functional, a lot more uh, if by putting color codes behind these. You may have noticed you can add that to Dataverse for a long time, but how do we actually use those? We'll actually use those here. How do I make things a lot more um, uh, editable as well, where I can hit a drop down box instead of having to go into these items? And maybe I want to do things like grouping of the data. So those are the three things we're gonna do in just a few minutes here to show you how you can elevate this much easier. First of all, let's go to our solution where we built these drop down boxes you're seeing here. In the solution here, you'll see I have a choice column. And in that choice column, it's checklist status, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this choice list and you'll see things I have like small pastel type colors here. Uh, make sure that they're super light because you're gonna put words on top of those. So you wanna have the, the need assistant to be super light. You do not wanna go like royal blue, for example, or black. So keep these very, very light and go ahead and click on each of these. It gives you a color picker where you can kind of slide these around and make it look like whatever you wish. After you have these colors chosen and ready to go, you're now ready to use those. So let's see how easy it is to really elevate that. First step we're gonna do is edit the actual view itself. So let me go over to our, our view that we're looking at now. This is the user checklist. I'll go over to my views. Okay, and I'll pick the one we have right here. So we have the active view as well as looking at before. And when I open this up, I wanna find a way without having to go a lot of, doing a lot of coding to make this look prettier. Now, previously you could have done this before, but we would have to use things like the, the, uh, the classic controls to do this. Now they finally made it where we can do this all in the modern controls, which makes it where it's much easier to do without a lot of work. So let's go up top here. And what we wanna do is hit the components button here. We'll select components, then we'll go over to add a new component. And once we do that, it will give us a list of components. We can go ahead and say, get more components, and then look for power apps. There's a boatload of them you can actually do. But I'll go ahead and select the power apps grid control that you see right here. But the other ones also work really well as well. So I'll hit the power apps grid control, hit the add button, and try ones that look work for you. Like for example, there's calendar controls inside of here, where you can put things for like a project system, might, might, a uh, calendar might work best. Now, we wanna go ahead and embed the child table underneath this. So this component is now letting us, let me kind of take a step back here, let me discard this real quick and discard this. So once I added this, I'll go back to component again. You'll see it now when I go to add component, it's right here. Okay, so this, this view now has it available to it. When I select it, you'll then see that I now have the ability to select a, a child table. Well, in my case, that child table is all the items in the checklist. So I think it's called a user checklist items all the way down to use here. There we go, let me kind of scroll down. User checklist activities, there they are. Then it'll show us the view it's going to show underneath this. And how do we link these two together? Well, it's through the user checklist table. So this is kind of basically drawing the relationship. So I've got a checklist right here, which has uh, many different items underneath it. So it's a one-to-many relationship. So this is my, my mini right here, user activities right, are all over here, okay? And then my checklist is right here. And there is a lookup inside this table that points from here to here. All right, so we, oop, don't wanna discard that this time. Let me go ahead and keep that. Oh, it's gonna make me save it now, it's fine. I'll try saving it. All right, now if I accidentally saved it like I just did, I can always get back to it by hitting the three dot again and going back to edit. Now we can see everything was saved. 
We also have things like enable editing. Do you want to be able to net, uh, uh, edit the columns inside of here? Sure, let's go ahead and turn that on. Uh, do you want to be able to see, uh, be able to edit the child uh, table? I'm not going to leave that. I'll leave that off for the time being, but you could do that as well. Everything you have control over. Things like filterings, things like sorting. You can do grouping inside of this. You can also aggregate the data if you wanted to as well. Now, also, you can turn on things like multi-selecting of things. Uh, enable it where they can range select. You just draw a box around the, uh, the fields and have that. And my favorite option is turning on the option set colors. I'll flip that to yes, and then we're all set. With that now done, let's go ahead and hit done here and hit save, and that's it. With, with less than a few minutes here, we've turned this on. Now, you really can't see it inside this view here, but if we go ahead and save and publish this, give it a few seconds to publish, we have just in a few seconds there, turn on editing, turn on cascading, where you have like a parent record has all the children, and we turn on the colors in less than five minutes. So let's see the result of this. As soon as it's done saving and publishing, what this, what this actually did to our work. To me, the biggest impact is that splash of color that makes it look so much better. I'll go back here, do a hard refresh. So control refresh, control F5, whatever you're used to doing, and do that. Then I'm gonna look at all the checklist here. We can immediately see that none of these have been started, but watch this. I can now hit the drop down box here and say, yep, that one's in progress. Hit the drop down box here and say, yep, that's been, I need assistance on that one. Hit the drop down box here and so on and so on. As I'm doing this, it's saving those records. So as I go into this record, you'll notice that it is indeed already been saved and marked as in progress. We can also, by the way, go into this and see all the children records under each of these as well. There we go. So we have all the activities that are done underneath this and what's been done, what's not been done. So they select these. You can see most of these don't have any, any activities underneath them at all. There we go. This one has a whole bunch. And we can kind of go deeper into it and even make this editable as you want, if you wanted to as well. But as you're seeing here, we have even the statuses here are been turned on as well. So we can collapse it and en enable it if you wanted to as well. So again, quick step to do to turn on color coding, to turn on embedding like you're seeing here, and to also turn on other things like uh, the ability to, to edit the data as well. So really cool uh, options for your users if you have a model-driven application. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on how to add a little more style to your user, your model-driven applications. If you want videos like these, please do subscribe and ring the bell so you can find out when we release more Power Apps videos. Have a great day.